So I'm here with John Paul from the band Clutch at Bunbury Music Festival. Um, first off, man, the new record, well, the newest record came out last year, Book of Bad Decisions, 2018. You guys been touring nonstop on that uh, that record. How have things how have things been going on this round for this record and touring? Uh, it's been great. Um, we uh, we did two pretty extensive uh, North American tours. Uh, we did uh, a headline tour in Europe as well, and um, we wrapped up. Uh, a lot of the touring in uh, about mid uh, April, I guess, and we've had a little, little bit of, a little bit of time off, so that's been nice. Um, we'll, uh, we'll crank back up again tonight. You know, we got our first uh, festival gig of the year, and then um, next week we head overseas, and we'll, we'll be in Europe for a couple weeks, and that'll be fun doing festivals there. Nice. Uh, and then we'll just continue it on. We'll, we'll keep touring for the rest of the year. You guys are going out with Kill Switch Engage, or has that already happened? Uh, that's going to happen in July. Okay. Yeah, we're excited yeah. about that. Those guys are intense. I just saw them at Sonic Temple Festival here a couple weeks ago. They're they're got a lot of energy. I think it match well with you guys. It's cool. Be an energetic night for sure. Cool. It should be, it should be fun. Um, you know, we've never played with those guys, and in fact, I've never seen them before. So this will be uh, it'll be nice. You know, that that's one of the the cool things about being in a band like Clutch is it. You know, we, we kind of have the ability to, to sort of play with a lot of different kinds of bands. Yeah. And uh, you know, for that, I, I, I think we're all. Uh, we're all thankful, and uh, so it'll be fun. I look forward to meeting those guys and checking them out. Yeah, yeah. It's funny you said that because I was going to talk about that because you know being on tour with Dropkick Murphy last year, last fall, and then we keep Kill Switch. Both bands have different different styles, I guess, but they both have the same amount of energy. So I guess right. in some ways, you know, it's kind of a parallel. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of been like that since the inception of the band. You know, we, we've kind of uh, we've we've had these opportunities to play with bands that really don't sound anything like Clutch, um, and uh, I think that's that's given us um, the opportunity to have a, a, a very kind of uh, wide fan base. You know, yeah. uh, in the early days, I remember we did tours with Marilyn Manson, uh, we did tours with Prong, we did tours with Sepultura, Pantera, uh, Coheed and Cambria, even and uh, Primus a couple summers ago. And so it's it, you know it's it's awesome that way, and that um, and that you know and that makes touring more fun, and because it wouldn't it wouldn't be very fun if we only got to play with. A certain kind of band, you know? right? Right. How do you compare like, doing a, a festival show gig to um, like your own show? Do you guys prefer one way or the other? Or is it kind of a good breakup? Or? Um, well, it's certainly the, the playing a festival breaks up the monotony of being in, in uh, you know, in, in regular sort of music venues, whether it's a club or a theater. Um, I always love to play outdoors. And uh, again, sort of going back to what we were talking about before, you know, here at a festival, we have the opportunity to play for a whole bunch of different kinds of people. Yeah. So um, we, we, we enjoy that. And, you know, we'll, we'll play for some new folks tonight, and hopefully some of those people will like our sound. And, you know, this thing will just keep growing. You're setting me up perfect, because that other question is like, you do, you just, like, I've done it this week, and I've discovered new bands that really dig, and some are really easy, because they're new bands. You go out and get that first record, and you kind of, Jump on board. Uh -huh. Band like Clutch, you guys have such a, a discography. You guys have been around for so long. <clears throat> for a person that sees you for the first time tonight and really digs you, what's the next logical step to, to dig in to really kind of get on, get into Clutch? Um, well, you know, we, we have uh, we have a pretty extensive catalog. You know, there's a lot of music there. There's there's uh, 27 years worth of recordings. Um, so you know, I, I just just find a song that you like and yeah. then and then jump in from there. You know, each record really has its own identity. Um, I think each record kind of marks a different point in the in the band's development, uh, where we were as musicians, where we were as, as people, where we were as band members. You know, um, it's a it's 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 an evolving thing. So so I would just say you know find a tune that you like, and listen to that <laughs> record, and, and go from there. You know, sounds good. Yeah, like you said, you know, you guys have quite a history, and you guys are around like in the days of the big the record company days. And the formula, the machine. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, you guys have been a band that seemed like you've adapted pretty well to doing things on your own terms, uh, releasing stuff. Maybe some bands they, they really miss that and they kind of fall off a little bit because of that. They lose that support. Yeah. Do you guys find touring and making music now a little less or more freeing now than it was back in the day, or can you kind of compare? Uh, that? Oh well, certainly. I mean, we we have much more freedom than we did in the in the very early days. Um, you know, in the in the nineties, we were sort of jumping from one one major label to the next. Um, and that was always a very frustrating thing, you know, but uh, a, a label would see a band like Clutch and, and, and uh, they would take note of the, uh, of the live shows because um, even early on we, we had a, a 
pretty uh, die hard following, yeah. you know. Um, you know, although at that time it was, you know, 100 or 200 or 300 tickets sold a night. Um, that was more than a lot of bands had. Yeah. And, and labels uh, immediately sort of latched onto that. They realized that there was a real fan base here. Uh, but the struggle always came in, in sort of in making the, this thing called Clutch a, a much more sort of commercial entity. And try as they might, it was, it was always, always unsuccessful. Yeah. Um, even, even when uh, we, we told ourselves, all right, let's try to write a song that might get on the radio. You know, we ended up with stuff like Pure Rock Fury. So I mean, it, even when we tried to sort of play ball, uh, it just it's just wasn't in our DNA. It's just not. We don't really know how to make that kind of commercial music. Yeah. Um, and so that was a great source of frustration for ourselves and the labels as well. Yeah. Um, in 2008, we started Weathermaker, our own label. Um, and we were lucky enough to sort of get things going before the total collapse of the <laughs> of the uh, of the record buying industry. Um, so you know, I think we were fortunate in that regard. Um, and now we're now we're going to pivot. You know, we're going to we're going to figure out how how to put out music these days. You know, yeah. in this in this climate. Um, and I'm confident that we can figure that out. We we have the resources to do it, um, and we certainly have the fans who I think will appreciate it if we if we make the effort to. To uh, you know, just keep this thing alive, keep this thing moving. We we don't want to be a nostalgia band. I don't right. want to be a band that gets up there and plays the songs from 20 years ago, and that's all they hear. You know, certainly I, I enjoy playing those songs, but you know, this is a real working band, and we we want to remain creative. Uh, we want to remain uh, vital, yeah. and uh, I think the way to do that is to continue to record and release music. Yeah, absolutely. I hear a song on how to shake hands off a new record. You know, it's I mean, president and things like that. But I think there's also a parallel. When I listen to it probably the music industry as well about you know you got the kiss babies and kiss mommy Sue. Sure, yeah, it's all, it's all part of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The cool thing about Clutch fans though is that they're, they are die hard. You know, I, I work an office job during the day, and I remember walking around and saw a guy coming around wearing his Clutch T-shirt, and like it's just like a, you automatically connect. So there is something there with Clutch uh, with the fans that even though maybe you guys weren't necessarily considered the commercial band. Fans are really loyal and die hard. Absolutely, and we are very grateful for that. Yeah, I imagine we'll see a few down there tonight in the front row, so that'd be yeah. cool. Yeah. So, obviously, we have a couple hours where you're doing your own show. You can make a set that kind of features the staple songs, the stuff that diehards want to hear, yeah. and also putting the new stuff. Festival, obviously, things are a little bit more uh, compact. How do you go about building a festival set list? Well, uh, one thing that's unique about Clutch is that we change the set list from night to night. And there is a system in place for that, and that is that each night we, we uh, each band member gets the opportunity to make a set. So tonight was uh, Tim's set. Um, our next show will be the Download Festival in London. Neil will make that set. Uh, that will be Dan, and then it will be myself. Nice. And we've we've done that order uh, probably for man, I don't know, close to 25 years now. That's I awesome. bet. <laughs> um, so it, it's really up to the guy uh, who writes the set list as to what you know what he wants to do. Um, I can tell you that when I'm writing a festival set list, I'm, I'm uh, you know I'm, I'm thinking about what kind of festival it is first of all, what the other bands are that are on the bill, um, you know where we are on the bill, and um, and then you know it's pretty much just what I want to play. You yeah. know, it, it's um, I, I, we don't really think too much about. You know, let's make this the perfect set list for this this thing. You know, because that always changes. You know, and, yeah. and um, it, we just we play stuff that we want to play. We play we play the songs in the order that we feel like putting them in that night. Um, and so that gives us, I feel like, a lot of flexibility, and it makes it more exciting for us too. You know, we don't want to just be up there playing the same thing every night in yeah. the same order. Some bands do that really well. Uh, some bands are very adamant that that's the way that that you know rock and roll should be done. I disagree. Yeah. Um, but you know that, that that that's something that keeps us keeps us engaged. Yeah. It's great for a fan too because you have a lot of fans that will travel from city to city to see a show. I mean, it does get a little stale. You know, if you hear the same thing, especially like the sta stage banter from the lead singer, things like that, or yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. That's boring. Right? Right. No one likes that. It takes the heart and soul out of it. So yeah. that makes it all that more exciting to kind of go and, and see what you guys are going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Have either have any of you guys ever thrown something at the other members that have been like, holy shit, like I need to go back and relearn how to play this? Or uh, sure, from time to time yeah. we do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we had that happen just the other day. You know, Tim said, hey, let's let's play uh, Willie Nelson. And we haven't played Willie Nelson in, man, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 years? I don't, I don't yeah. know how long it's been. 
Uh, so we, you know, we spent uh, we spent a little bit of time the other day at rehearsal trying to get that song together, uh, and I'm excited. I think I think it actually it kind of plays itself. It's a great tune. Uh, so uh, yeah, so that'll be fun. Yeah. So so to answer your question, yes, we, that does happen. Yeah, that's very cool. You said Willie Nelson made me think that you know, we get a we get a bio sheet and stuff before we do the interviews and stuff. And one thing I didn't know is that Eric Church has been using one of your songs as his intro. For shows. That was, yeah, that's I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. heard that. Yeah, that's cool, right? Yeah. Electric Worry, he, he plays. That's his intro music. Yeah, that's kind of cool to see. Yeah. Like you said, it's probably, you guys certainly don't have one label or one genre, but that's kind of cool that it's reaching out even that far. Absolutely. The guy, Gary Church, who I guess in the country world could be considered like a collection of country music because he doesn't kind of conform either. So that's, yeah, that's pretty fitting. So very cool, man. So download, that's going to be huge. Yep. Europe. Yep. And then, uh, like you said, you guys are already planning, like, you don't really know what the next steps is, just trying to figure all that out. Yeah. So very cool. Yeah. All right, man, we're looking forward to uh, the show tonight. Cool. Be my first clutch show. Is that right? Yeah. Whoa. Well, oh, I've heard you guys, you know, I've listened to some records and stuff, but I've never got to see you guys live, so I'm excited okay. about it, too. So, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so I'll shoot some shots, and I'll kind of pull to the back and just take it all in, man. Good, good. Yeah. Well, I, I, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope we're, we're okay, man. I'm sure you will, <laughs> man. I really appreciate your time. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Take care. We'll see you around. All right.